and I took into consideration several other factors, uh, several socioeconomic factors in justifying the relaxation in the restrictions, despite the high prevalence of COVID. Uh, we examined, for example, the psychological, the emotional strain, mental fatigue, and even the rise in unemployment, mm -hmm. as well as the wounds inflicted by COVID um, to the economy in making the determination to relax the measures. So it's not just about the amount of um, COVID cases. And uh, as we relax the measures, these um, COVID cases are likely to remain high. I think gone are the days when we end up with zero, zero, zero in all of the columns. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that we may get back to uh, yes, COVID zero, that is extremely yeah. unlikely. So we now have to prepare to manage higher levels of um, COVID and to ensure that our people do not become critically ill which, or die. Which, but then again... Mm -hmm. Which I was uh, sorry, then, sorry to inter interject here, Mr. Prime Minister, because we have had yeah. a number of calls from our listeners here at Pointville Communications where people are basically saying they're of the opinion that the numbers need to be reduced before we at least ease up on the regulations, you know, make them, making them more relaxed. So there are people who are asking, why not reduce the numbers then move and then forward. move to relaxing the, the regulations or the restrictions, so to speak? Well, the problem is that we have so many people who are unvaccinated is, is, that is it is unlikely that we're going to see any significant reduction uh, down to single digit and so on. Those days are gone. Mm -hmm. You ain't seen any single digit um you know, total cases, you may get single digit daily cases. Uh, we have to understand that, um, you know, there's widespread um, community spread. And as a consequence, um, you know, the virus is out there and just replicating itself um, uh, among unvaccinated persons primarily. And I presume to that even some vaccinated persons have been infected. But the science again would have shown that. Um, hmm. Uh, vaccinated persons, um, they carry a low viral load and, you know, it's unlikely that they will transmit um, uh, the, the virus in uh, potent ways in, in which um, vaccinated, unvaccinated persons um, would have um, transmitted the virus. Hmm. Uh, so, again, you have to look at it in a very practical way. If we have a thousand um, cases out there already and uh, the Delta variant in particular multiplies by about five, six times, Potentially, we may have about five, 6,000 um, cases out there. And uh, to rein in 6,000 cases, I mean, the contact tracing teams that we have in place, it is impracticable for them to achieve that. Uh, so I have no doubt that we'll reduce our numbers. But again, these um, on the 20 metric sensor that are utilized by the CDC and others to determine whether or not we have a high prevalence of COVID, I think they may have to um, review Hmm. those metrics uh, to increase them because I do not believe that we're going back to total cases on the 20 anytime soon. And it's going to take a little time for this um, virus still to be burn out and it will not burn out quickly unless we um, have most of our people um, vaccinated. 